Hello Unity fans and welcome back to my Hixmap game development series. In the previous two videos we created our basic user interface and then expanded it by adding a farm and automated harvesting to our selection of buildings. Today we will refine our UI by considering the effect of anchors, allowing UI buttons to be any shape not only rectangular and adding an easy to use basic tooltip for displaying information based on the location of the mouse cursor. Let's get going. If you've watched the previous two videos, which I'll link to in the top right, you'll be familiar with the resource building UI buttons and icons in the bottom left. I would firstly like to consider the anchors of the buttons in relation to the screen space. Depending on where each UI element is situated, there is a specific anchor point that makes most sense for it. This becomes important if you want to maybe resize your UI elements easily, or your screen resolution and aspect ratio changes. Anchoring your UI elements correctly from the start can save you a lot of headaches later on. For example, I've placed the resources button in the bottom left of the screen. It would make sense to anchor it to the bottom left. This means its bottom left corner will always be aligned to the bottom left of the screen. And if you resize it, or if your screen's resolution changes, it will always be in the right place. Let's see how it behaves if we anchored it, say, in the center of the screen. If we now decide we want it a bit smaller or larger, or someone plays the game on a monitor with a different aspect ratio, it jumps around in height on the screen, keeping its alignment with the center of the screen. Of course, we don't want this, so we anchor it to the bottom left. Now, all of its children game objects will also automatically keep behaving properly when we move or resize the parent, including the animations on the resource buttons themselves. I've added in another section of UI in the top left, where we'll display resource count and many other pieces of information. We'll go into what each of them represents in more detail as our development progresses. These are anchored to the top left, to always keep them in that corner, even if they're resized or the screen resolution changes. I'm going to make them bigger for now, just so you can see them better in this video. Now, you will notice these backgrounds are rectangular, which is how Unity's buttons work. They are specified by a specific corner or center point, and a width and a height, forming a rectangle. This is important since the round buttons at the bottom are actually also seen by Unity as rectangles. You could actually click in the corner of the transparent part of the rectangle and it will be recorded as a click on the button, even though the cursor is not over the actual image. This is problematic for non-rectangular buttons. Luckily, there's an easy way to fix it. I found a script online that applies a canvas raycast filter to check the pixel under the mouse cursor and only registers the hit on the button if the pixel is not transparent. This applies to hovering over the image and to clicking on it, and works for both simple and sliced images. Note that we defined the actions to perform when hovering over or clicking the buttons in the previous UI video. Here they are shown in the event trigger component. So you could now have buttons of any shape as specified by the image you're using. The last item I want to consider today is the addition of a tooltip, a short string of text that appears over certain parts of the UI when the mouse is hovering over it, providing some useful information to the player. My tooltip is based on a tutorial by CodeMonkey, which I'll link to in the description. The idea is that you create a single tooltip consisting of a background with some text over it. You then add a tooltip script to each UI element for which you want to display some tooltip, and specify the string for each element. Then, when the mouse hovers over the element, the tooltip text is set and the width and height of the background is calculated based on the displayed text. When the mouse cursor leaves the element, the tooltip is disabled. Go check out his series if you want to get into more detail. I've modified CodeMonkey's tooltip slightly to give me a bit more freedom with the visualization parameters and to remove dependence on one of his custom button elements, which I'm not using here. Now we can give the tooltip object a fitting background rather than just a grey area 
and add an almost white text over it. Then we add the add tooltip script to each appropriate element of the UI. Set each one's text, and when we now hover over the buttons, the tooltips pop up as they should. This adds a nice layer of information to the UI, where things could be made a bit clearer to the player. I'll end off with a few quick remarks. You'll see that the icons in the top left are also 3D, so we're able to add some visualization to them as well. I have them rotating permanently here, but you'd probably want to have them motionless for the most part, with just some quick animation or effect to draw some attention to them from time to time. You don't want to overdo it. Next, I have some Text Mesh Pro objects underneath the icons that can be used to update the current supply and income rates. There are different ways this information could be displayed, but for now I'm going to go with the two differently colored plain text labels. Finally, note that the UI button background images are actually somewhat transparent, which means you can still see the outlines of what's going on on the map itself. Of course, this can also be adjusted to whatever looks and plays better. In the next video, we'll look at how the behind the scenes data structures need to be set up to allow us to specify various different building types, their resource costs and their impacts on the game generically so that one method can be used to build any of the buildings, including testing whether you have enough resources and applying the building's impact to the rest of the game parameters. Please consider subscribing if you'd like to continue on this exciting journey with me. Goodbye!